Shabbat Shalom, Zion. I pray that everyone is having a wonderful and blessed Shabbat. So we got an exciting lesson today. We're going to call this one Jacob's Continual Troubles Until It's Done. Now you're going to see why we titled it this way here in a few. Because there are some things that we need to show you, some things that need to be brought out. So before we do that, let's go to Revelation chapter 3 and let's look at verse 18. Because this is going to become very evident of what we need to do in these last days. All right, so let's read. It says, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich and white remnant, that you may be cloth and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Now, how many times we read over this and we miss something? We skip over important points because in, this, in these last days, brothers and sisters, this is so vital. And the Most High is telling us that we're going to be tried in a fire. So when you take gold, and I don't know if you all seen melted gold, but it's amazing to watch. And, you know, you can melt gold, you can mold it, you can destroy it, refine it. It would never lose its value. You know, and we're like that gold that's constantly being tried in the fire. And at the, you know, and when it's all said and done, we're going to come out victorious. We're going to come out like white remnant. You know, and the shame of our nakedness is going to be covered. What is that shame of our nakedness? Because our forefathers put us in a predicament where we lost everything. We lost our heritage. We lost the Torah. And now we're just now getting that back as we're waking up all over the world. We're starting to slowly get back to what the Most High had always planned for us. If had our forefathers not have sinned and rebelled against the Most High. So now we see ourselves going through this process all over again. And so when it says, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see, see, we could not hear the word of Yahuwah through Christianity and all this religion. We could not hear the word of Yahuwah through the eyes of the heathens. We could not hear it because they had taken our Bible, they've taken our Torah, and use it for themselves as the Bible prophesied that it would happen in Maccabees, that they would take the word of Yahuwah and paint the likeness of the images of themselves, and they would use our manuscript for themselves. And because of the sins of our forefathers constantly rebelling generation after generation, put us in a really bad situation. And we're going to talk about some of that a little later. And we became so dumbfounded and they used the word of the Most High against us. They use it against us during slavery and they're still trying to do it now. But see, the veils are being revealed, brothers and sisters. Our eyes are being anointed through the Ruach and we're starting to see the word of Yahuwah through the eyes of our forefathers like it was supposed to be. And the lies of are being revealed. The lies are being brought to the light. And people all over the world are starting to see it. Even the heathens are starting to see it. All right, so let's take it a step further. So let's go ahead and get a second witness to Revelation chapter 3 about gold being tried in the fire. And I want you to pay close attention to this because you got to see the, re the resemblance and you got to see the true meaning of this. Now I'm going to be reading from the Sefer. This is going to be coming from for Ezra chapter 16 and, seven, uh, and 73. So if you have your Apocrypha, it's going to be 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and 73. Now listen to this very first verse right here, verse 73. It says, Then shall they be known, you hear that? Then shall they be known who are my what? Chosen. Who are my chosen. And they shall be tried. I hear that? And they shall be tried, not the heathens, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Why is he doing this? Because the Most High is preparing us. He is preparing us to be delivered. 
Now look at verse 74. It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, says Yahuwah, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Okay, so now we're going through all this stuff and our faith is going to be tested like never before, Zion. Our faith is going to be tested. So get ready for it. And I'm not talking about the financial issues that our brothers and sisters are having. I'm not talking about the family issues. I'm talking about our faith being tested. And then it says in verse 75, it says, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Elohim is your guide. Do y'all hear that, saints? It says, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Elohim is your guide. So why do we keep worrying and being so fearful? Why do we keep worrying about when the Most High is going to come back? What we need to worry about is pleasing the Most High and trusting in Him. Now look at verse 76. It says, And the guide of them who guard, I love that, who guard my commandments and precepts, says Yahuwah Elohim, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. In other words, don't become prideful. But at the same time, the Most High knows that we're going through hell down here. And brothers and sisters, this walk, we know that this walk is not easy. We're going to we're going to sin. All right. There's no way around that. We we live in this world. But when we sin, we need to repent and we need to press forward and make every strength in our body, every soul. To overcome and allow the most high to work in us, because that's the only thing that can work and cleanse that in us because the Bible says that our righteousness are like as filthy rags. So no matter what we do, brothers and sisters, our own righteousness are going to always be filthy. It's going to be the righteousness of the most high that's going to cover his people. But we must first, we must go through the fire. We must be tried. And that's the only way, that's the only way that we're going to become made perfect and we're going to be made whole. We have to go through the trials and you know, there's no other way around it. You know, you got Hebrews thinking that they're going to just electric slide right into the kingdom. Well, ain't nobody electric sliding right into the kingdom. You got to go through some things. So, I mean, don't give up, Zion. Don't get weary because the Most High fights for his people. There's no need to fear. There's, there's no need for that. You know, now let's go to Ephesians chapter three and verse 13. Let me show you what it says there. It says, wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. So in other words, the Most High is taking us through this stuff so he can purify us. And in the end, it's going to be for our good. It's going to be for our benefit. Now, some of you may be saying or thinking, well, I thought the curses were supposed to end in 2019. I thought we were supposed to be delivered. I thought all this stuff was supposed to be reversed. Now, if you're thinking that, you are greatly deceived and have been misled. Now, let me get one thing clear about these curses, brothers and sisters. You need to realize, and I'm going to show you proof. For a lot of our people, the curses are still in full effect. Y'all hear me? You're going to understand exactly what I'm saying once I show you, but for a lot of our people, the curses are still in full effect. Let me prove it to you. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and let's look at verses one and two, because I'm going to show you who these curses apply to, who they don't really apply to. All right, so we got to look at the big picture here. You're going to see it clearly. It says, and it shall come to pass if you shall hearken. Y'all hear that? There's that big if. If you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahuwah Elohaka to guard and to do all his commandments which I command you this day that Yahuwah Elohaka will set you on high above all nations. Above all nations of the earth. Verse 2, 
and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you shall hearken. There's that if again, if you shall hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah el -Ahaka. Now, when we look at this, this has a future, this has a past and a future application. But however, there are still some curses that we're going to always be under until the Most High comes back again. And that's going to be Deuteronomy 28, 48, where it says that we would have to go to our enemies in a want of food, clothes, and in a want of all things. Because we, we're so messed up to the point now where we can't even come together and have our own business. That that thing is over. That's not going to happen. I'm, I'm sorry to say that, brothers and sisters, but it's not going to happen. Now, getting back to verse 1 and 2. Now, we have roughly, what, 43 million uh, blacks in the United States, so-called blacks in the United States. Now, that's not including our brothers and sisters. That's all over the world. So let's just say, for edification purposes, let's just say we have roughly 150 million so-called Hebrews, whether they're sleeping or woke. Now, do you think that 150 million so-called Israelites are doing one and two? You get where I'm coming from? So now you got to ask yourself the question. A lot of our people who are still asleep are still under the full curses. You got to understand that. OK, and that's why you're going to see that's why you're going to continue to see our brothers and sisters getting shot down the streets. That's why you're going to continue to see all this discrimination against our people. This is why you're going to see all this hatred against our people. It's continual and it's only going to get worse. Yeah, I know there's a lot of Hebrews who post stuff on their on their page that shows that our people are being shot in the streets and all the negative stuff. But get used to it. Get used to it because you're going to see a lot more. And then we've been seeing uh, church burnings and what have you, you know, and here's my thing on that, Zion. I don't care if they burn every black, wicked Christian church down. Matter of fact, they need to burn all them churches down. Maybe it will wake our people the hell up because our people are asleep. They're in a stupor. So something needs to happen for our people to wake up. So I say burn, baby, burn. So for those of us who are awakened, and are obeying Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2. Yes, the curses are being turned. They are being flipped. The curses are coming off of us, and they're being put on the heathens. And so the Most High does not lie. His word does not lie. He says that if you do this to keep all my commandments and all I've asked of you, he says that these curses shall not fall upon you. I truly believe that, brothers and sisters. That is a true statement and a true fact. So when we think about the curses as a whole, yes, there are some curses that we're going to always be under until the Most High comes. But for the most part, those who are still sleeping, who aren't willing to wake up and come to this truth, as we've been telling them time after time, they are going to remain, they're going to continue to remain under the full curses and they're going to be destroyed along with the heathens. That's why it's so important, brothers and sisters, to get this thing right and to humble ourselves and to come back to Yahuwah and keep his Torah. And there's no other way. I'm sorry. There's no other way around it. You know, either, you know, what the Bible says, either you're for me or you're against me. You can't have it no other way. You cannot straddle the fence. There's no such thing. There's no position for that. You cannot serve two masters. All right. So let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 30 and let's look at verses 7 and eight. I want to show you something here because see, you have some Hebrews who really believe that the time of Jacob's trouble is only going to happen in the future. But I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters, Jacob's trouble has been happening since our forefathers left Jerusalem in 70 AD. Now, if we want to get technical and go back further than that, let's go back to the Egyptian captivity. Then we had the Babylonian captivity. The Medes and the Persian had us in captivity. The Syrians had us in captivity. The Greeks, the Romans, the Arabs, and now this current captivity. So you want to talk about a time of Jacob's trouble. It seems like we've been going through that for the last 4,000 years. So it's a continual because every generation is, is experiencing it because of the sins of our forefathers. You would, you would have thought that they would have learned after the first captivity 
I mean, even after the second captivity, you would have thought that they would have learned. But our forefathers never got it. And then comes along, comes Saul, wanting to be like the other nations. We want to be like kings. We want kings. Nope. All right. You're going to see where that ends up at and look where it got us. I'm telling you, Zion, it's a mess. So let's look at verse seven. It says, alas, for the day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Yaquav's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So, you know, all these trials that we're going through, the fiery trials are for our benefit because the Most High is preparing us for deliverance. Let's look at verse eight. It says, for it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahuwah seven oath, that I will break, you hear that? That I will break his yoke from off your neck. So that means we might not be in literal change right now, but the, the, the evil wickedness of spiritual change are still around us because they control everything. We have to go to them. We have to go to our enemies for everything. So they still rule the world. They control the finances. They control the media. They control, control the news outlets. They control the police department, you name it. And it says, and will burst your bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. I'm telling you, Zion, it's, it's coming and it's coming. We see it. We see it all around us. And as we're waking up and getting back to the ways of the most high, He's going to show us mighty miracles. And I'm telling you, and if we continue to obey brothers, and sisters, like it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, we got to put away our wickedness. He's going to show us mighty miracles. As a matter of fact, he's going to allow us to have certain powers and the things that Hamashiach was doing that we're going to be able to do. Because Hamashiach told his disciples that you're going to be, be able to do greater things. So I'm telling you, it's, it's a great time that we're living in, brothers and sisters, but we have to humble ourselves. We have to empty our cups because we cannot, we cannot receive, we cannot receive Yah's spirit. We cannot receive Yahuwah with a full cup. We have to empty that cup so that the Most High can fill it with his Ruach. And that's the only way, brothers and sisters, that we're going to gain for it. You got too many Hebrews who feel like they just, they know everything. They, 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 they you know, they just got all the answers. Let me tell you something. Ain't not one Hebrew on this earth that has all the answers. No one has the complete truth, brothers and sisters. And if anybody says that and thinks that, then they lie to themselves because they don't. We only we only have a smidget. And I'm telling you, there, there's so many things, there's so many mysteries to the Most High that it would blow our minds. And that's why when you read in the book of Psalms, you know, that's why David was a, was a man after Yah's own heart because David understood a lot of the mysteries of the most high you know he understood and a lot of times and sometimes brothers and sisters we need to get back out in the nature we need to get back out to the wilderness and just focus you know because there's something about being out in nature that just brings a peace you know and I, and I do it just about every Shabbat I get out in nature I go somewhere where it's quiet so I can meditate and hear the voice of Yahuwah and that's where a lot of these lessons come from because I can hear the most high speaking to me because it's quiet and see, Zion, this is no time to become weary just because the Most High is not coming back on your terms, just because the Most High is not coming back fast enough. I got it. We're sick of tired of being tired. We're sick of tired of being tired, you know, and there's not a day that goes by where I don't even want to go into work, where I just want this thing to end. But you know what, Zion? We still got work to do. There's still prophecies. That still hasn't been fulfilled. And the only thing that the Most High is bound by is his word. You got to understand that. So, you know, and I'm not trying to discourage you, but it could be another five years. It could be another 10 years. It could be another year. It could be two years. We do not know. And we cannot base that just upon solely, solely of what's going on. Now, we know that we're living in the last days. We know that we're close. So when we talk about the time being cut short, the time could be five years, 10 years versus being here another 20 years, you know, being cut by, by 10 years. We just don't know, Zion. The Bible says we must occupy until he comes. So use this time. 
use this time to witness. If the Most High is encouraging you to start video lessons, what have you, do that. You know, you got to listen to the voice of the Most High. And I've had people who've, who've come to me in the past said that, hey, you know, you encouraged me to start videos. All praises to the Most High. That's what we got to do. You know, in each one of us are going to have to reach somebody. You know, we all have a part to play in this, brothers and sisters, in these last day events. And it's going to be up to us to get this gospel out. And I'm not saying that to give us credit because, you know, all praises go to the Most High Yah. But he's going to use his people to get this work out. All right. So we have to clearly understand that. So we can't become weary within ourselves. We can't become negative just because things aren't happening fast enough. And then we just we throw a tantrum, a temper tantrum and we go on our own. We, we, we go off on things. No, brothers and sisters, this is the time to get strong. This is a time to build our minds, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Because I'm telling you, things are going to get so bad. We're going to have to have that strength, brothers and sisters. You know, this, you know, this, this walk is not for the faint in heart. It's, it's not. If you're the type of person that faints so easily, you're, you're blown by just a little of the wind. You know, it's going to be hard for a lot of our people to stand in these last days. We got to become mentally tough, mentally strong, brothers and sisters. That's why I continue to do what I do. And I vow every day. You know, to the most high that I'm going to blow this trumpet, even if it kills me. And I don't plan on stopping. I don't care if it is another 20 or 10 years, five years or whatever. I'm not even thinking about that. I'm not concerned about that. My, my concern is getting this message to our people as many as we can, because the most high has our brothers and sisters who are going to wake up in their appointed times. All right. So let's get some more scriptures. Let's go to James, the book of James, chapter one and verse 12. It says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which Yahuwah has promised to them that love him. Endure to the end, brothers and sisters. That's what we got to do. Endure to the end. He says it, blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. There's a reason why we're going through this, brothers and sisters. It's not only because of, of the sins of our forefathers, but the Most High is preparing us so that we don't make the mistakes again. All right, let's move on to verse 13 through 15. And it says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yah. For Yahuwah cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. So we like to blame everybody else but ourselves. But we're the ones who put ourselves in these situations, brothers and sisters. It's us that's doing that. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter four and verse 15. It says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was, was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Talking about Hamashiach, that he went through all of this for us, brothers and sisters, so that we can bear witness that so we can have the example to go by. All right. So let's go to Hebrews 2 and verse 18. It says, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to help them that are tempted. So every example that we had was through Hamashiach so that we can see how to overcome. All right, so let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. It says, There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But Yahuwah is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So in other words, the Most High is not going to put us 
through no more than we can bear. And see, that's the good news, Zion. So that's why we, sh we should not be fearful. We should not be weary. You know, we should accept the trials and the fiery trials that the Most High, that the Most High has for us and not complain. And that's how we're going to be purified. That's the only way we're going to be purified. We're going to have to be overcomers. And we're going to have to be strong in these last days. Now, here's a powerful one, saints. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verses 3 through 5. It says, for though we walk in the flesh. Y'all hear that? We walk in the flesh. So we always, we're always warring against the flesh. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In other words, constantly seeking those wicked things that's going to cause us to fall. In verse 4, it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, we don't have any weapons here that we can use that's going to help us overcome sin. But it goes on to say, but mighty through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds. It is the most high power that's going to give us strength. Get this, verse 5, casting down imaginations, because guess what? Where does sin begin? It starts in the thought process. It begins with a thought. The more you think about it, the more you gravitate towards it. That's when that thing pulls you like a magnet. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yah and bring it into captivity. Every thought, you heard it? Every thought to the obedience of Mashiach. And see, this is what I'm talking about, saints. So when we're talking about our time of trouble that we're going through right now, every little thing that we do, you know, focusing on the most high so that he can capture our thoughts and pull them unto him. Because I'm telling you, we are going to be purified in these last days. And the only way that we're going to be purified is we're going to have to go through some fiery trials, brothers and sisters. And like I said before, there is no way around it. You can pout stomp, cry, whatever, and complain about the most the most high not coming back on time or coming, coming back when you want him to come back. He's going to come back on time. But, you know, a lot of you are complaining that he's not coming back when I want him to come back. You know, you got to get that out your mind because it's going to drive you completely crazy. And, you know, and you don't want to find yourself on the other side of the fence. So that's why we got to be patient. We can't be weary. And we're going to have to live every day as though if the Most High was coming back any minute. I mean, that's the, that's the thought process we're going to have to have, brothers and sisters. And I'm not saying we put aside everything. I'm not saying you go live in a cave and, and twiddle your thumbs. But I'm talking about we must occupy that at the same time. We must be watchful, prayerful. We must be, we must, we must be vigilant and constantly looking for ways to win our brothers and sisters over to the Most High. So with that being said, Zion, we're going to experience our time of trouble. We're constantly ex experiencing it right now, but it's going to increase. It's going to increase. And that's why we have to be ready. That's why we have to be strong and constantly in this word. We can't be dependent upon no man. All right. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, I pray that you are edified. And let's keep encouraging one another. Let's keep praying for one another. And until next time, I say shalom. And stay strong.